Hello, uh, greetings to you, our dear viewers, our subscribers, the people who really love our channel all about gospel at Papa Mugalu. I want to extend my sincere greetings to you wherever you're basing from, those who are watching us live from the United States of America, from the diaspora, those who are in Uganda, people on the African continent, uh, Asian continent, we love you so much. Uh, we want to tell you that the channel is going to become more and more exciting, educative, and spiritual touching. For us, we chose to come and we do a great work in you, most especially while most especially building your spirits and enlightening you more about why are we living on this earth? What are we supposed to do? And after doing that, where are we going? We have launched another teaching uh, and that is called the Bible Prophecies. Yeah, very many people outside there, you don't know that uh, Bible Prophecies, most of them are being fulfilled and others are yet to be fulfilled. But people are living in the world unknowingly. Why am I talking about this? I, I have really taken a hint when people have been questioning me. Very many people questioning me, Papa, when is Jesus Christ going to come back? Papa, what will happen? How will things appear? What will be there? Why, what, what are the signs? Some people read the Bible and they see the signs. And after observing that the signs are living and they are evident in the world, people do not mind to take a hint and care, to be very careful about what will happen definitely. But I want to thank the Lord that he has graced us at our channel. We are going to be enlightening people about the Bible prophecies. And uh, we have given the program, this program, a name. And the name is called the End Time Revival. We shall be always coming up with uh, episodes to you such that you'll be in the world knowing because all of us, we do not know the exact time, the exact hour, but we, are, we have to be ready, waiting unto our Savior who went and he gave a promise that I will come back to rapture you. So, the world has dimensions and stages on how it is going to be completely destroyed. You need to know that if you have a creek and you would like that person to be one of the people who is going to get this knowledge, I'm requesting you to share this message to that person. If it is possible, let that person subscribe to the channel, put on the bell icon, the channel will always be updating you with several episodes and I will know by the end of these episodes you people your life will not remain the same and very many people I know are going to be blessed from this. Let us go straight forward onto the topic why we are here. Um, I send my greetings to the apostle, a bishop and a pastor uh, and that is my pastor Pastor Daniel Semakula to the I extend my greetings to all my fellow ministers at New Revival Church Kamocha, the Bland New Mugore, the Bamugangas. I extend my sincere greetings to you. I send my greetings to my permanent viewers. I have them and I always see your comments. Maria from Dubai, Pepe from Saudi Arabia, Peace Kayen and the husband Rutanj from Saudi Arabia. Very many people from different countries. Those who are in Uganda, Nola, uh, these days you see you are in the, Let me stop from there because you might get annoyed. Papa, why do you tell people where I'm hiding from? Okay, it's fine, Flavia. I love you so much for the effort that you're doing uh, on this channel. May God really bless you. I know God is going to bless you with something that some pray, um, that's my prayer. You pray. That may God give you something unexpected, something that is not fitting you, something that is bigger than your status. May God give you that. 
because you have you, you've really stood for this channel to say that it is a success in people's life. Thank you for the gospel that you've been sharing to the people, the people that, that you've been bringing unto me. Susani, thank you for believing in me. Wherever you are, you talk about me, you talk about my channel, you, you, you bring people to me. You say that you, you, you don't know. The moment that you will come and you see my papa, life is going to change. I want to extend my greetings to you. I love you so much. All of you people, I love you. I cannot mention all of you, your names, but I believe that the Lord is doing a very good and a powerful work. Thank you very much. Let me let us have a, a, a brief break and then we come back on the matter. Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to base my teachings on the five prophets. There are very many prophets in the Bible, but yeah, these five prophets, they talked more. They enlightened the, the scriptures in these, uh, the, the, these people brought on earth. They enlightened more about the end time. And uh, as we are into the end time revival program, I'm going to use these five prophets. And the one who is the greatest prophet, and that is Jesus Christ. Another one will be the prophet Daniel. Another one will be Ezekiel. Another one will be Paul. Paul was an apostle. Apostle is a person who is carrying all the spiritual gifts. So, Apostle Paul is going to be inclusive. And the last one is going to be the prophet John. Who wrote the book of Revelation. We are going to read more the book of Revelation because it carries what happened before the creation. It gives us a picture of heaven before the world was made. And the Revelation continues to give us the picture of the creation of God on earth. It gave us the, the way how the world lived, people who came on the, on, on the land. It, it gives us a clear knowledge about how the devil Lucifer was casted out of heaven and came on the earth and disorganized all things on the earth it gives us how the world is going to live, how it's going to be the, the transition how transitions are going to happen onto this world and also the book of Revelation continue to give us uh, the death the ascension the descension in the grave the ascension from the the resurrection, the ascension to heaven, the promises, and what will happen at the exact day that everyone is in fear of thinking about, that every uh, day that every person does not want even to talk about. But we have to, because it is there, the day of judgment. I want to thank the Lord that the prophet John enlightened the world more about that day. And that's the reason why we are going to be more evident in that book. May God bless you. Let me come back with the first episode and the first episode is going to be salvation. There is no way how we can tackle about the end time revival, about the end times without tackling about salvation. The first episode it is going to be salvation. This is what I want you to know. Is that God planted a garden. He gave Adam authority over this garden of Eden. Life was magnificent. Fellowship with God was a day routine. God walked in this garden. God placed two trees in the garden. One was the tree of life and the other the tree of the knowledge of knowing good 
the evil. God told Adam to refrain from eating the fruits from the tree that was providing the knowledge of knowing good and evil. But he disobeyed. This sin drove humanity outside Eden into our present world to gain first-hand knowledge of what is evil. Adam's transgressions disrupted the relationship between God and man. Fortunately, God, <coughs> God deeply cared about this broken fellowship. Therefore, he could not want to, to lose the relationship. In whatever that you can think about that God wanted to redeem back the, the fellowship that he had with man. So, God had to provide the, the, the Messiah to the world. God is mighty Savior, left a throne in heaven and went to earth in a human form to rescue Adam, Eve, and their descendants too, including you and me. Every person on the earth has disobeyed God, with which resulted in a broken relationship. Every person needs a Savior. There is no way. How could a man survive without Jesus Christ? Because he is the only savior that God could accept for every man to be redeemed. So to receive redemption, every man needs Christ. God had a dynamic plan for providing salvation. Jesus Christ was excelled as a teacher, a healer, and a miracle performer. However, none of those things could bridge the gap between a holy God and a rebellious man. A perfect God must hold to perfect justice accordingly. The sins of man must be punished because punishment could not be avoided. The critical question was who could endure the punishment? The scripture tells us that before Jesus died, sin was placed upon him so that a perfect sacrifice would pay the death penalty for sin. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 21, Jesus took the punishment that you and I deserved because the shedding of the blood is the only payment God could accept when you read according to the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verses 22. In the resurrection, Jesus demonstrated authority over death. God provided a way to eradicate the penalty for sin and to obtain eternal life. But only on his terms, each person must acknowledge that he or she had, has sinned against God. And he trust that the shed blood, the shed, the blood that Jesus shed was received as a gift, paid the penalty for that sin. It is insufficient to simply believe that God exists. It is never enough for a person to behave in a religious manner or have another person ask God for forgiveness on his or her behalf. Each person must go directly to the Savior according to the book of Hebrews chapter 7 and verses 24. And you will read it up to 27. People must humble themselves before God as scripture testifies that God crown is the humble with the salvation. That is Psalms 149 verses 4. God offers each man or a woman and a child and a personal restored relationship to anyone who believes him. Belief in God is important because to not believe what God says is, imp is to imply that he is a liar. As an illustration of this point, both the Old and the New Testament stated that God accepted Abraham simply because Abraham believed God. And that is Genesis 15, 6. 
God is able to forgive any sin, but he chooses not to forgive the sin of unbelief. Faith in Jesus is similar to faith in an airplane. When a passenger boards an airplane, that person believes that the plane will fly and land safely. The passenger does not put faith in his or her own ability to fly. In a similar manner, trust God. Trust him to save you, for, forgive you, and one day safely transport you to heaven. Your belief shows faith in God's abilities, promises, and faithfulness.